Hey everybody, it's Andy, and we are here in Brisbane, Australia, where we just wrapped up the 2025 edition of the Organization for Human Brain Mapping Conference, or OHBM. Now, the first thing I want to say is this is my first time to Australia, and the city of Brisbane is lovely. It has great sights. The bridges are really beautiful to look at, especially at night. The river is beautiful. The people are great, very friendly. Uh, everything about it really has been really pleasant. So I, I just want to say that first. If you ever have the opportunity, the time, the funds, consider going to Australia. You won't regret it. Now, I'm here because my flight got canceled. I was supposed to leave earlier this morning. But unfortunately, they they could not make it work. Uh, now, I'm not the kind of guy who complains about airlines on social media. I'm a bigger man than that. All I will say is that the airline company that canceled my flight, the name begins with the letter U. That's all I'm going to say. Could be anybody to protect their privacy. Now, moving on to the conference itself. So I arrived here last Saturday, about eight days ago, and before the actual OHBM conference starts, there's something called Brain Hack. So a few days before the actual conference, also called a satellite conference or pre-conference event. Now, Brain Hack, it was my first time at a Brain Hack as well. So a lot of first things happening at this conference. And I didn't really know what to expect. You know, obviously from the name, you think there's a lot of coding, there's a lot of working on software, and that's all very, very true. But for anybody watching this, anybody curious about what Brain Hack is, all I will say is it's not very rigid. In that sense, the, the schedule is pretty flexible. There are talks, but there's also a lot of time you can spend just going to the hacking room, hanging out with other coders, or helping other coders to develop or think up some new kind of software package, usually, or some website. So you don't need an extensive coding background. Obviously, knowing something about coding will enhance the experience, but I don't want that to really you know, limit anybody if they don't have a really strong coding background. You can still contribute, you can still learn what's going on and profit from it. So a few things I went to at BrainHack uh, were, so I get some talks, some demonstrations of different software packages. They also have things called train traps. So these, again, they're pretty forgiving for people who don't have any coding background because they use something, at least the examples I saw, they used something called Google Colab. Google Colab, for those who haven't used it, they give you a link. It opens up on your web browser. And then there are blocks of code you can click a play button to execute. So it runs the code return some kind of value, some kind of image, some kind of result. And then the presenter just walks you through that to demonstrate how to do something or how to use some kind of software package. So the one I went to was called Visualization with Python by Sina Mansour. Really great talk and used Google Colabs to illustrate how to visualize brain imaging results. <clears throat> I also went to something called Neurodesk, which if you've been watching this channel, I've been really excited about it, promoting it for about a year now. It's essentially like a virtual environment in which you can install, or have pre-installed all of these different software packages like SPM, AFNI, FSL, which doesn't interfere with your local machine. So this makes it a lot easier, especially during you know courses or workshops, for everybody to be on the same page. And even outside a workshop, if you do all your analyses in Neurodesk, it's a much more controlled, contained environment that makes it easier to transfer code to somebody else and you can be pretty sure it's gonna work for them as well. Sorry, there's some sirens in the background. Brisbane's still lovely. It's like any big city. Stuff happens, looks like a fire department, something like that. So the municipal services work. Another reason why it's a great city. So that was most of what I experienced at BrainHack. And after that was Educational Day. And the purpose of Educational Day, as its name implies, they have these educational courses, either lasting all day or half a day. You can mix and match as you want. And this is kind of similar to BrainHack. They, they showcase some you know, new software package, some concept maybe people should be familiar with. 
And usually it has some kind of hands-on component that you could follow along with on your laptop or maybe even on your phone. Uh, one of the ones I went to was New Frontiers in Neuroimaging Meta-Analyses. Uh, the, the talks that I, I heard for the most part were by James Kent. He was one of the developers on a package called Neurosynth Compose, which you can access from your web browser. So very accessible. And it's a way to run these imaging meta-analyses from your web browser. Makes it very convenient and very accessible. So if you've ever used something like Neurosynth, the original, or something like Ginger Ale, which you would you know, download to your machine, then run, definitely give Neurosynth Compose a look. It's a little bit more uh, sophisticated, has more options than the original Neurodesk. And it can be very useful if you're thinking about running your own meta-analysis. So give that a look. Next, I went to dealing with analytical variability of brain imaging pipelines. So this was a symposium for people to present a variety of different software tools, Neurodesk being one of them. Uh, there was also NiPoppy and BrainLife.io. And let me say a few words about BrainLife.io. I have not really used it yet. I've checked out the interface, but I haven't really uploaded my own data. The idea behind that was developed by Franco Pastilli and others at the University of Texas at Austin. The idea is to upload data to the cloud and then analyze it on the cloud. And then once it's done, you can download it, look at it, do what you want with it. So interesting, for especially for people who have really large data sets that they either don't want to or they cannot install all of it on their local machine. There's not simply enough room, right? So that's something which I definitely tend to dig into once I get back home. So a few words about some talks I went to and just kind of some general themes uh, through these talks, obviously I can't, I can't list all of them, but I am noticing a lot more people are talking about AI, obviously a very hot topic across not just neural imaging, neuroscience, but all scientific fields and everyday life as well. And they're using this along with things like deep learning tools for image segmentation, uh, white matter tract reconstruction, different kinds of analyses, which I think is just going to accelerate as time goes on. Another topic I was kind of tuned into was about scanner harmonization. So the idea is with all these uh, new multi-site studies, you now it could be Enigma is one or ABCD, you now either within a certain country or even between countries, how do you make sure that it's not a confound that you are collecting data from different scan vendors, different maybe even field strengths or different scanning sequences? How do you make sure that that doesn't affect your results, how do you control for it? That's the idea behind scanner harmonization. So another topic, which I, I think is gonna become even more essential for people to know about if they try to use data from any of these consortia based studies. Another interesting development that made me excited was SPM 25. For those who have been using SPM a long time, you heard that right, SPM 25 meaning it was released in 2025. The last major version was SPM 12, which was released in 2012. And I really applaud them for making some real big changes in SPM. So SPM traditionally has been done through MATLAB and some people don't like MATLAB. Some people don't just like the coding interface. Some people don't like the fact that you have to pay for a MATLAB license, which can be pretty pricey. So totally understandable. And what they're trying to do is also make it accessible with Python, have these Python wrappers, which allow you to use a Python interface and also possibly remove the need for a MATLAB license. <clears throat> I took a look at the new documentation they have and it looks great. It's much more current, it's, it looks more sophisticated, it looks just really, really good. And I, I think they've been putting a lot of really hard work into this and I'm enthusiastic about when I get back to the United States, checking it out and seeing what the new developments are with that. Uh, some last thoughts are about GitHub and Python. 
so GitHub, if you've never used GitHub, that's fine. I didn't use it until, I don't know, four years ago, maybe something like that. Maybe it's been a little bit longer, but you know, pr pretty recently, GitHub's been around for longer than you think. And most of what I'm seeing at the conference is people who are releasing some kind of new software or developing a software. Usually it's in GitHub. I can't say if it's most people, but many people, many people are now using GitHub. So for those who don't know GitHub yet, but you're curious, I highly recommend learning GitHub. You don't have to become an expert, but just know the basics so that you have a good idea what they're talking about. And if at some point you want to contribute to one of these repositories that is interesting, you can do that through GitHub. It's very collaborative. It makes it easy to contribute to other people's code. And Python in a related vein is also, it seems to be becoming more and more popular, not just in neuroimaging, but more broadly. And it does seem to be the language of choice for these developers who are making the most recent software imaging tools. So if you haven't learned Python, again, <laughs> Don't want to give you something else to learn, but Python, it is useful and again, enhances your overall experience if you know at least the fundamentals of that. Last thing is uh, stickers. Uh, let's end on a kind of light note. People are using stickers to promote whatever they're creating. So th these are a, a simple but effective way, a cheap way to get the word out. You could put them on your laptop, put them on your name tag, put them wherever you want and people can see it. And maybe that makes them aware of something that they were not using before. So I saw that a lot during this conference and I think it's a great idea. Let's end on that note and to send you on your way for everybody who you know, presented, gave a talk, gave a workshop, or you were just here to, to learn and contribute to the environment. Uh, thank you all so much. This was a great conference, one of my favorites, uh, probably my favorite conference to go to. And I'll see you all next year, June 2026, in Bordeaux, France. Have a safe trip. Hope you had a great conference, and I'll see you guys next time.